Hello and welcome. I'm pleased to be joined on the Core Report Weekend Edition by Tushar Jani, Chairman of the SCA Group and CSC. Tushar Jani, as many of you might know, was also founder of the well-known logistics and delivery company Blue Dart. Thank you very much for joining me, uh, Mr. Jani. So uh, let me start off with the first question so that we'll put it aside and uh, behind us. Uh, why did you sell Blue Dart? First of all, thank you, Govind, for calling me. It's rare on podcasts when people talk about logistics. So congratulations to you and my compliment. It's very interesting why we sold Blue Dart. And I remember when we sold it, every employee came and asked us, why did you do that? But we were very close to employees. The single reason was Blue Dart was a baby considered by three fathers. And we didn't want a baby to suffer. We came in a mode and development mode where every year we had to add aircraft. An aircraft acquisition those days in 2004 and 5 for an Indian entrepreneur was a very difficult proposition. So we thought DHL, with their all might, they'll be able to bring aircraft, which they've done every year, they've upgraded. And we thought there were seven and a half thousand people working in the company. We wanted to secure their future and make that baby sure grows as a nice woman, which she is today. Right. So, aircraft and uh, air logistics is, a, is or was a critical component of the operation? It is, because okay. we started in 1996 with the aircraft and our growth came with every time we add aircraft. So, it was very evident that we had to add aircraft to, as a capacity to grow and that's what happened with Blue Dart's growth. And today Blue Dart is wherever it is, it's only because their own dedicated fleet. So what's changed since the time you sold it and today in, in, in as much as we are also able to move a lot of cargo today on roads, roads have become better, we have expressways and so on. What's, what's changed? I think so it will remain the same in the United States, they are very good roads. But Express thrives, you know, UPS and FedEx are billions of dollars of company. In India also will go same way because certain parcels or or type of goods are critical to be delivered in time, number one. Number two, in a good, safe and secure manner. And that will always try. So on an air cargo, on a global volume, 35% of volume, uh, value of air cargo goes by air, but 22% of volume. And that would continue for domestic in India also. Of course, we had a good run when earlier e-commerce came in. Even mobile cover was to go into the air, which is now has found its level where mobile covers, lower items, value item goes by road and in the air, which is critical, I have value goes. Right. Okay. So I'm going to come to the present and then go back to the past a little later. So two things about the present, uh, which is geopolitics, uh, the Russia Ukraine war, which we can see clearly has caused, for example, rerouting of air routes. Uh, for passenger and obviously cargo as well. And the Middle East war, you know, India wanted to uh, announce the IMEC corridor, the India Middle East uh, EU corridor, uh, which in which Haifa in Israel is a critical component. Now, obviously, with the war going on, we cannot uh, focus on that, at least for now. So geopolitics is affecting or likely to affect the way uh, the logistics or the, f uh, the freight industry is going to be affected and perhaps was not in the thinking or consideration of a lot of people even a year and a half ago. How are you seeing it? See, first of all, you have to go back a little bit. It is COVID who brought the logistic in forefront. Otherwise, logistic supply chain guy was put into one corner in the corporate office. Suddenly, he's now sitting in the corner office next to the CEO. So the COVID bring forefront to all of us. The supply chain become important for survival of humankind. And if there was no air supply chain available, more and more millions of people would have died. So distribution of COVID, uh, drugs, vaccines, and logistics played a very big role. So it journey started from there. And then it turned into, as we got out of COVID, it took the shape of geopolitics then. So if you see President Biden in various of his lecture, he's talking supply chain. Look at our prime minister, he's talking about supply chain. Not only that, he's gone one step ahead and announced Gati Shakti, 
of 1,25,000 crore initiative just to improve logistic infrastructure. So everybody is that. Now what happened in the geopolitics? You, you see in China, then China plus one. So people were looking good volunteer and India was a good volunteer as a good manufacturer. Uh, we are in terms of our supply chain, we are quite agility wise, we are agile, we are reliable and we are innovative. And that will come in way uh, in favor of India and way of China. China in terms of logistics is much behind in supply chain than India. How is that? The, because our processes, our uh, manpower, our uh, understanding of supply chain is far better than Chinese. And who better than Indian can understand Jugaad? Logistics are dusra naam hai Jugaad, right? So we are, we are quite responsive. That's why I say, you know, I redefine the air during COVID. So A stands for agility, I stand for innovation, and R stands for resilience. And these three uh, components of the air, India is anyway ahead of any of the country. Though. Can you, since you mentioned it, can you illustrate a little more when you say China is better? It is true, the Chinese manufacturing capacity ability is huge. Will you buy a Chinese product with its quality? That's number one. Number two, China supply chain, even though people say, is not very reliable compared to India at this stage, at this point of time. Few years before, India had a problem. But government's current government initiative on all e-initiative, so everything is going online uh, on an e-platform, that has in the process of moving packages. Today, the Indian custom does much faster work than the private sector of cargo agents of people like us. So that's the change which has come in. And that's how you see on logistic index where we were and where we are now, we jumped 40 points almost. Right, so if you were to take the, the journey of a package, let's say uh, going into the manufacture of a car or the car itself going out or a laptop from China versus India, how would you say we stack up in terms of, let's say, processing time at the, at the seaport or at the airport, depending on the product? I think if you look at it, and I'll just take you back into the history. When I came in 1976, there was an air cargo dwell time, means package remain on the ground for 21 days, right? Today we are down to few hours. And that's the big leap we have taken. And, and this has happened in the last, how long? Last about five years, a lot of changes have come. And, and this is in airports like Mumbai only? Or Mumbai, Delhi, Delhi. Uh, Chennai, Bangalore, and, Hyderabad. And, and these are packages or, uh, con or, or containers that are coming from outside into outside India? Outside into India. And India. then getting distributed within India? Yes. So you're saying that that used to take 21 days earlier? 21 days, packages used to remain at the airport. For clearance, okay. Before the clearance which is now in few hours. So government has taken a lot of step. I think we private sector has to come up with the government and supply chain will further improve in my mind. So where is the private sector lacking? The private sector is not buckled up the way government has buckled up the resources with the technology. I think we need to come up of that level and things will change with Gati Shakti, I'm sure. So again, could you give us an example of when, when, when you, I'm sure when you're saying this, you're visualizing something. I'm just giving you, I like say custom works 24 by 7. So you could go and take docu uh, your parcel even on Sunday. But private sector not coming forward to take delivery on Sunday, which we had to ultimately, which will bring a change in all of us. So just give small uh, example, which I give it to you. Or say before the cargo arrival, give all the information to custom. So it can be pre-cleared before it arrives. So our approach is very simple as far as our company is concerned. If passenger can get out from the aeroplane within an hour claiming his baggage and go home, why cargo should remain at the airport for hours or days? And let me tell you, on the passenger side, India is number one today in facilitation. If you go JFK, is 120 minutes waiting in immigration. You go to Hitro, is 140 minutes waiting. Today at Indian airport, you come in, 
walk out almost in 45 minutes. But that's also because you have less volume, right? No, not really. Idea is we are very good with the processes compared to them. And our men, our output has improved tremendously compared to the world. Okay. So let me come back to, uh, I, I, I asked about the IMEC corridor and I talked about the geopolitics of it. What's changing uh, as you see today in terms of what are some of the bigger clients, what are their concerns? Because finally they are the people who are moving or want to move production to India or, uh, you know, move goods out of India if they're already producing here at scale. I just give a few data to you. Since COVID now, over a period, our Chinese import has gone down by 18% by volume. Our export and import out of Europe and US is increased almost by 27%. All volume. On volume. Yeah. I'm not, I don't know the value. All on volume. So 68% of our export going by air on international export goes to Europe and US. 78% of our volume comes from US and Europe into India. And it's growing. Look at Apple phone. We get two charters every week bringing their components. They've got three charters coming out of Bangalore. Every day the finished, you know, iPhones were going out of the country. And you know, the value which Apple has generated out of their India business is unbelievable in terms of time. I think so what we are doing is, there's a lot of structure changes government has brought. Along with the whole awareness in the logistic, first we never used to get people to come and work. Now at least we are getting people to come and work. There are institutes which are now running good logistic courses, supply chain courses. So that, you know, canvas has changed, infrastructure canvas has changed, process canvas has changed. What is need to be changed is mindset. I'll come to that in a moment. So the example you quoted, which is of uh, iPhone components coming yes. in charters from, let's say, you, did you say United States? Yeah. Ah, okay. uh, or somewhere countries. else in the world. Okay, maybe mostly in the region. And then, but the, the finished product going to the United States. And you, and you said two or three a day. Yes. From Bangalore. Yes. Okay. So now this obviously is because we've created, let's say, the whole Foxconn ecosystem Correct. where we are producing uh, iPhones and other phones and other components. What are the other things that are happening? Because this is new. This is, I mean, in terms of... But uh, Samsung was there much before iPhone, right? Number one. Number two, look at automobiles. You know, we are the probably second or third largest uh, uh, purchaser of that chip which they put into the automobile. And look at how uh, automobiles are being exported out of India and to developed countries. It's not an underdeveloping country. So we have bought that change in our manufacturing cycle. People are ready to buy. Look at Bajaj, you know, the kind of uh, three-wheelers or two-wheelers which are being used of Bajaj. Look at in Africa, the motorcycle which is a Bajaj, which is so popular. So we are yeah. changing. Bharat badal raha hai. Go yeah. ahead. Okay. No, so my question is that when you talk about uh, 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 phones and chips, uh, these are high value, but these are small. Our traditional problems have not been in this area. Our traditional problems have been, let's say you big bring something big or you want to take out something big like cars uh, and the time it takes from to go from the factory to the port for the ships to come, the big ships don't come because uh, and now we have a new transshipment port coming up for the first time. Otherwise, they were going to Colombo. Uh, so all of that was also a uh, uh, bug by. So my, the questions I'm asking are really coming from where could we go rather than where we are. No, my point is the time has reduced considerably. Mm. Uh, I mean, is there is room for improvement? Answer is yes. Do we want to improve? Answer is yes. Is government committed to improve? Answer is yes. I think it's a private sector who has to buckle up now with the government in partnership that we also want to change, right? So I think if combine everything, we would be better off in three to five years. I give a small example of pharma. 20% generic drugs of the world come from Indian pharma company. We're going to go through that 40%. But our API still come from China. Now, that's what we need to change to build our own APIs over a period. And the way the government is working, next three to five years, we'll self-reliance on it. Today, when we open our pharma terminal during the COVID time, 
they were shipping about 30, 40 tons a day. Same, now we are reached to 180 tons a day. So this is 180 tons of? Pharma going by air every day. To other parts? To of... other parts, mainly to Europe and US. Okay. And we are so much into the system. If India supplies get disrupted to the world of pharma, there'll be chaos in the world. But, and, and of course, not that I would know so much, but you're saying that most of these drugs travel by air and not by ship? Because there are temperature constraints, there are time constraints, so they go by air. Okay. So, I've been meeting a lot of companies, for example, who want to, let's say, set up in India. And they're all looking around. They've been looking around for some time. I think almost since 2017, when Trump started increasing uh, tariffs uh, against yes. China, and everyone's been thinking of a China plus one strategy. But the question that I would have even today is, to what extent are we logistically ready for this? Uh, to, so, suppose you said there are three aircraft that take out iPhones uh, from uh, Bangalore. But let's say tomorrow, uh, production of iPhones triples or quadruples. Uh, would we do we have, are we ready at this point? I think so we're ready both maritime as well as aviation. Maritime, you know, Give City has now uh, set up where people can bring their ship and lease it out. They've set it up for aviation. Two big news happened, 500 aircraft, each by Indigo and Tata. Tata ownership of Air India will change the India because most of the traffic was then going via Gulf, uh, various countries, and then going to Europe and US. In three years, it will change. Air India will be a different airline in three years to come. How does that affect uh, freight and cargo? The, because every uh, passenger airline, aircraft also has a belly capacity and that will tremendously increasing. And Air India at some point of time will have freighter when they find the right time, right match. Is there a number that uh, you can say, for example, let's say if whatever, 10 tons of cargo goes out of India, how much goes in the belly of passenger aircraft versus? So today, uh, prior to COVID, 85% was belly, 15% was freighter. Okay. Today, it is about 40% freighter, 60% belly. But once Air India come in the picture with the belly space and the growth what India would happen, I would say 75% would go on a belly and 25% would be freighter. So there are uh, clearly more freighter aircraft are flying into India today than it ever is. before. It is. So what's changed there? The change is faster movement, more cargo can come, growth can be handled because the Bailey space has that own time schedule. Yeah. If factory needs a cargo, it's better to move by freighter and bring it in time so you can achieve just in time. And what would be the com constituents of this? So you said pharma was one example. The, the For the export? And all that. Yeah. Pharma specialty chemical. India is the best specialty chemical manufacturer in the world. Uh, medical equipment, imaging equipment. The, India is going to become one of the biggest hubs for the medical equipment, vaccines. In the amount of vaccines now we make, because everybody knows only COVID, there are 20 other vaccines India makes. So we are number one. We are, we are the vaccine uh, capital of the world. So and all of this is going out Into, on freighters mostly uh, and... Freighters, line flights, which we call passenger. But just to give you a small number, 31% of anti-depression drug of the world is consumed in the United States. Out of that, 60% is supplied by India. So just imagine, I'll just give you one number, but imagine the other numbers. Specialty chemicals, we have captured about 40% of market share. And of course, textile and fashion garments are, Inditex today is looking, manufacturing more and more in India. Right. So, uh, let me, I'll come to the mindset part because you mentioned that. Uh, to come back to capacity and our ability to grow uh, capacity. So, I'll start with ports and then come to air. On ports, uh, we've seen a s uh, slew of new announcements Absolutely. in the last couple Absolutely. of months and that's good. But one of those announcements, for example, Vadwan port, which is quite close to where we are sitting right now, right. Uh, has been in the making for more than 20 years. Uh, and they were environmental opposition. So, that's fine. I mean, these, these things happen. But my question is that if you look at the time that many of these projects take to come to fruition, are we losing out and if so, how? Of course, we have lost out, if you ask me. Are we losing out yet? The answer is yes. There is, see, infrastructure in this country 
always is a problem. Either you have some lobby or some farmer lobby or local people lobby or fishermen's lobby. Look at in our own city in Mumbai to get that uh, coastal way to go to up to uh, Varsova, right? So it took time and it will take time. But good part is current government regime is very decisive and they're finding solution to the problem. And that is important. And I believe when we all vote in time to come, we have seen one majority, clear majority government, what it can do then to have a coalition. So I'm not going to talk about politics, whatever party you bring, but give them absolute majority. Right. So let me, I'll come back to ports, but let's talk about airports for a moment. So Mumbai, airports like Mumbai, for example, are pretty full. I mean, we can, we're doing almost close to peak of, let's say, 900 movements. We, it's very difficult to do more. A lot of the industry, for traditional reasons, is in and around, at least, let's say, in areas like pharmaceuticals, automotive, and so on. Uh, airports like Bangalore have more runways. Delhi has more runways. But they're also growing on the passenger side. So what is, how are you seeing? Uh, but Navi Mumbai will be there in short time. But probably next year, Navi Mumbai will be operational. And Navi Mumbai will give that answer of 100 million probably, I don't know what they are projecting. But if you're talking 100 million plus passenger out of Navi Mumbai and about 50 million here in Mumbai, uh, you have achieved uh, what you need. I mean, nowhere in the world, 150 million. And City of Mumbai will have enough uh, upliftment capacity, passenger or cargo. Yeah, so that's Mumbai. And as you look ahead... Look at Delhi. Yeah. Now we've got Noida, which is coming up. Delhi currently, Indira Gandhi Airport, has four runway. The Noida will have four runway. Now eight runways into distance of 100 kilometer is fantastic. As you look at project, as you project where the business will come from uh, in the in the cargo and logistics business, a lot of it will be in the south. Are you seeing that kind of capacity addition in airports? I airports? think it will change. It will change. You will see a lot of capacity coming in north, vis-a-vis -vis UP, Rajasthan, Haryana. You will see that change will come. Because please understand, all over the world, the industry has gone where ports are. If you look at all European ports, bit Liverpool, bit Hamburg, bit Rotterdam, bit Antwerp. So wherever the upliftment capacity will come, the industry will come around there. And I believe Noida as well as uh, IG Airport, both is a great uh, future. They will make it, we are seeing it already. Air India already started bringing transshipment cargo, picking up from New York, bringing to Mumbai and taking to Dubai. From Dubai cargo comes to Mumbai, go to Sydney, right? This has never happened. So how does that work? Why, why would cargo come to uh, Delhi, which is... Because it's optimization. Because Air India doesn't go to New York to Dubai directly. So they bring it to Delhi and transship it into their flight going to Dubai. And you're saying that's cheaper for someone than to put it in an Emirates? Or... Absolutely. Okay. Air India is going to be a different entity. What are the rates like if, if I can I don't know exact yeah. rate, but okay. they are very, very competitive. Yeah. Competitive enough for you to, for and that. They are making the product better day and day. That's important. The new aircraft, I don't know when you flew last, but the new aircraft, 777, are very nice. They are new, I mean, as opposed to everything else. No, I mean, they have taken the old ones on lease, but they are new compared to what they have. No, but on the cargo front, you're saying that the product that they're offering, uh, for example, uh, New York to Dubai, uh, which I'm sure will take longer, but uh, is much more no, price competitive. It take much time. It comes to New York to Delhi in the morning and connecting flight straight into Dubai. So the time difference only maybe one hour. And and customs does not hold it. Uh, no, in there India. are set procedures on the transshipment set up by custom. We still need to be make it little more automated or more uh, e-friendly which I'm sure we are, we are working with the uh, government authority. We should, you should visit our Delhi terminal to see how that is changing. No, I'd love to. And and who would like typically use these services? Would it, it can't, obviously I'm assuming it's not an Indian company because this no, is No, it's an yeah. American exporter yeah. who's sending it to Dubai or who's sending into Australia. Hmm. And, and time wise, what is the difference you're saying? Or you're saying there's no Just difference about at all? Hardly one, one and a half hour for a longer flight of say 18, 24 hours, 
one and a half hour is not a much when you give the economical advantage. Right. And, and you're saying similar transshipment to Australia? Yes. So uh, they come into Delhi, like say San Francisco to Delhi, Delhi to Sydney or Delhi to Melbourne. So the opportunity for this is huge. Huge. You, we just have to make use of, take Bangladesh. Bangladesh doesn't have upliftment capacity. Today what we are doing, we are taking cargo by truck from Dhaka airport, bring it by road into Indira Gandhi airport and send it to Europe. Hmm. Because there is no capacity Bangladesh to India by air. So multimodal is going to be name of the game. Our neighboring country will be benefited. Sri Lanka will be benefited, Nepal will be benefited, uh, Bhutan will be benefited. But this paperwork sounds quite frightening. I mean, to bring it by road from, let's say, Bangladesh, crossing through, obviously, West Bengal into India. But and then you look at Europe. No, Europe, what yes, but in, Europe? in India can, I mean, what, what is Why the, India cannot do it? No, no, I, I'm sure it is doing it. I'm saying, how, what's the time that... Nothing. So, you take from Benapur to Delhi, which is roughly about 48 hours and then connect on the flight straight in another eight hours time. So, so you're saying customs processing at the border is reasonably fast? Absolutely. I mean, I'm only asking because I don't know. No, no, go in, I'm telling you, and I repeat, government has walked much faster than private sector. Okay, so now let me come to this point, and you mentioned it about three times now. So why do you say that private sector is not stepped because up? Because private sector always thought we could blame government, and we <laughs> ignore our own lethargy in our own system. Hmm. I think that, that we will have to, you know, cut our that lethargy and inertia and move forward to a better supply chain. Okay. So, can you give me an example from yourself uh, about how you think you could have moved faster, given that, let's say, government had opened up? My point is, make use of what has happened on fintech. Today, uh, vegetable vendors, when your wife goes, and she says, okay, I'll pay you, I don't have money. The guy just shows her QR code. Okay, Babi ji, ye QR code hai, paisa de do. Anna? Same thing, government has made things available. We are not using it. Men also use it, by the way. I'm just saying, <laughs> so Saturday, yeah. Sunday, yeah. people don't work. Hmm. They think supply chain cannot work on Saturday, Sunday. But it's a continuous process. So private industry will have to work on Saturday, Sunday to improve their supply chain, to make product going out which they are not doing it. So today what happens on our cargo terminal, Saturday, Sunday, virtually we don't have a cargo. So Monday, if you come on my terminal, nothing has come. All flight almost goes empty. But what stops you from, I mean, all other airlines and aircraft and uh, passengers are going through on Saturday, Sunday and all days. So That's why would my argument. You as a passenger ready to take flight on Sunday, why can't your cargo take flight on Sunday too? Hmm. And the answer but people have to work. They have to do custom clearance. They have to give declarations or whatever formalities. For that, they have to call people and people will not come. So, but you're saying all of India's private cargo movement comes to a standstill on weekends? Yes. And that is shame. When government has put infrastructure, technology, people, resources, mm. and we are not able to do it, not able to make use of it. But I believe we will be forced to do it. You know, once your growth comes, you will see people coming up. So what they do, they bring all cargo on Friday. And then they create congestion, right? So they said, finish Saturday, Sunday work, you finish on Friday. So they still have their holiday. But why it should be that way? Produce more, right? And use Saturday, Sunday. It will come by force. Okay, so, but there's nothing stopping you from doing it, let's say, in the SCA group. No, we are doing it. We are open 24 by 7. Okay. But I'm, I'm obligated. But you're the only one. As huh? a custom custodian, I'm obligated to run 24 by 7. So during COVID, even we operated yeah. all the time. So all vaccines and mask and ventilator, we were operating. Okay. So let me come to another aspect of what's changed in the business, at least from where I see it. A lot of newcomers have come in. So there are at two ends. One is, let's say, larger delivery companies themselves. Uh, including well-funded and tech kind of thing. And then the other, the tech companies who are providing uh, all kinds of B2B solutions, efficiency solutions, and so on. Uh, how are you seeing them and what, what in your mind, as looking at it, someone who's seen this industry for so many decades, what is their contribution? I always say our business is 
hard to hard, hand to hand. Technology is enabler. Unless you don't see our person's face, who come and pick it up, your parcel, you're not going to be rest. So we have to play with your heart and make you assure that don't worry, it is picked up. Number two, we have to ensure that it goes on the aeroplane or truck. Number three, we have to ensure that aeroplane goes or truck get driven. And the other side, when it comes, we have to ensure we come to your home and give it to in your hand. So in all this process, technology is just an enabler. The biggest challenge logistic industry will face is the human resource. We'll need people. to understand when a guy says, I'm a delivery boy, he doesn't get a girl. So his prospective group doesn't get a bride. So we have to change that. But I'm happy Swiggy and all are changing that perception, right? It will take time. But the idea is, do we need technology? Answer is yes. So many years before, Mr. Fred Smith, the owner and chairman of Federal Express, made this statement to me. He said 50% of a business is pickup and delivery and 50% of business giving you information. And that would, but if your pickup and delivery has not done well, then information has no meaning. Right? So I would say urge investor, entrepreneur, Build your uh, tech platform, but do your groundwork first. You're also, that's saying in another way that we are not giving enough focus there, or companies are I not- I think we're really not giving enough focus on physical aspect. In terms of motivating people to come and work, make their life a little easy. How many times people ask glass of water for a delivery boy comes to del deliver parcel at your home? Nobody bothers about him. Has he got a water? I think that every delivery company must put health checker app within their company. Is that guy okay? Right. I mean, you go in 50 degree temperature for him to go and make delivery. I think we have to be being human uh, first in our companies. That is I don't see and technology can't provide that. So all this valuation hurts me and makes me unhappy. Why is that? You have to spend money on people. Technology will change. Within no time, it will change. You know, we started, Blue Dot started Trace and Track in 1986 when internet was not born. There were no satellite. And look at where the technology has gone. Now my small daughter can do uh, Trace and Track uh, with a little bit coding and all. So it will change, it will evolve. But have we worked on the people? Have we done final delivery? Look at what happened globally with FedEx, UPS and uh, DHL. They're still working on people. And I'm proud to say, during COVID, DHL had volunteered to give each of their staff around the world 300 euro as just one-time money to handle the stress of the life. I'm sure FedEx has got similar values. I'm sure UPS has got similar values. So we have to build that culture in India. Hmm. Okay, we're running out of time, uh, Mr. Jani. So let me come back to the first question I asked you. And I asked you why you sold uh, Blue Dart at the time you did. So when you look back now, uh, all the changes that have happened, and clearly the last decade, for example, we've seen a lot of changes, including because of technology. Uh, do you feel you should have held on for a little longer? Not really. I think so. DHL has done a splendid job. And at the end, it was Blue Darters who were running the company. Whether it's DHL on the top, or Tushar Jani Clyde Kofa Kushu Dubas on the top, didn't matter. Our staff is still highly committed. They still operate 99% or you know audit level. And they'll bid any company with infrastructure and power. I mean, I've seen people carrying their bags on the top when they serve the water even today. When they were so Blue Dart will carry on. It's a brand which multinational has kept the brand going. It's not DHL, it's Blue Dart. That itself is a proof with the Blue Dart. So I think so. Uh, we have protected our people's future and I'm very proud with our blue daughters. Yeah, that's a good note to end on. Thank you very much for joining Thank me, you. Mr. Jani. Thank you.